Welcome. I should really tell you, I should know all your names. Uh, Agile India, Design Day. Apparently, I'm a designer. However, I'm not this person here. So uh, the first thing I'd like to say is if you signed up for this workshop more than two days ago, you're expecting to see Alberta, and you were not expecting to see me. So apologies. If you did sign up, if you didn't sign up, then forget everything that I just said. Uh, but my first question is, uh, well, first of all, please don't be afraid of the picture. Uh, does anyone recognize this sports team? Did you, did you just read it here? <laughs> There's a video. OK, OK. Yes. And, and I put this picture up because I'm from New Zealand. Even though my parents are Chinese, I was born in the mountain of love in New Zealand, and so I put this up. But actually, I put it up because when we talk about teams, then very, very often we talk about sports metaphors. We, we talk about, yeah, high-performing teams. And if there's one team in the world which is a high-performing team, and thank you very much uh, for saying this, then uh, this team, the New Zealand All Black Rugby team, it's a sport where you kick around a ball and you chase after it. And in fact, the word scrum comes from it. So if you're familiar with scrum, yes, you're nodding. Thank you, sir, getting that audience engagement going. Um, then this team is one of the, you, you could say that this team is the most successful sports team in the history of the world. For the last 150 years, they've been in the top one or two or three um, uh, in, 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 in the world. So why not, why not learn from a team like this if we're talking about design as, you know, as, a, as a team sport and so forth? Um, High-performing sports teams, yes. They're the model. Uh, <clears throat> but actually, I don't think they are. And so before I even start the talk, I want to think about, well, OK, um, let's make this, let me go back. When I go to work, I don't go to a sports stadium. I go to work in one of these things here in an office. Uh, when I go to work, I don't train for 95% of my time. I, I, what, what today is an exception. We're in training today, or we're doing conferences. But uh, I don't train for 95% of the time, and 5% is when I go onto the pitch on the, on the, on the rugby field. Uh, that's, not, that's what I do. We don't, we, don't, we don't play for half the time, and then the next half of the time, we swap sides in the market position so that we go against ourselves in the, in the, in the, in the, other, in the other way. And usually, um, when you're a coach or a team manager for, uh, for a team like this, uh, you can fire a person. They, if they're not performing, they're on the bench, or they're out, or otherwise. You have, usually have more power, and you have more money. Um, and we don't have the defensive coach, and we don't have the coach that looks after how to run with the ball, or how to pass, pass the ball, and so forth. For us, I would say that, for sure, you know, sport, high-performing sports teams is kind, of, is, is kind of useful, in terms of analogy. But actually, in our day-to-day, -day, what does it really mean? So in our day, we usually work in an office like this. Um, if you did not recognize the uh, All Blacks in the sports team, um, I hope you recognize this. The, you know, because the, when I go to work, it's, it's, it's either in an office um, or as part of a remote team. Um, I, I, we, we play with more than one side at one time. Um, usually, we hope that the people that we're playing with, they're on our side. But in a large organization, sometimes you, you, have, to, you have to find out whether they are on your side or not. Uh, we're always in transition. There is not one time. There is no perfect moment. And so one of the things about teams or design teams or teams per se is that they're always in transition. So there's no perfect match. There's no perfect time. There's not one moment. This is our everyday lives. Uh, OK. And also, uh, we actually have to take care of the players in some ways. Is this making sense so far? I'm hoping that even if you're not nodding, you're nodding inside. Yes? OK. Right. So. Um, you came to this talk or this workshop. This is why there's business paper and pens here, because you came. You see, design teams are a design exercise. Um, are you designers? Uh, it's not a trick question. Are you, do you come from a design background? Yes. Okay. Uh, and and the, the rest of you are no developers, product owners. Okay. Some nods. What else? What else do you do? Just, just we 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 don't have to use a microphone here. You're a product owner. Okay. Management, OK, right. So you came here to learn about, we'll find out in a second. That's the first exercise, OK. Right, um, I also got permission because Alberta, uh, t three days ago now, she said, Phil, can you deliver this talk? Because I can't go there. She sends her apologies. So apologies, you, you do not have Alberta, you have me. 
but she also gave me permission to change the title. Uh, I'm not going to change what you came here to do, but I added a little bit more. So I added this thing, is that actually, instead of um, the All Blacks, instead of high-performing sports teams, we'll come back to that point later on. Actually, I would like to subtitle this talk, Practical Considerations for Our Everyday Teams. So it's just hopefully, like, there's three or four tips and techniques, um, and we'll finish early, don't worry three or four tips and techniques, or just things about uh, teams that I've been working with over the years. Yes? Okay, more nods, excellent. Okay, you know I'm not Alberta, I'm this one here. Uh, this is what you signed up for, so if, you, if you're here, it's probably because you read this. Uh, and if you read this, you also read this part here, where about leadership styles, building, inheriting teams, all these sorts of things here. So there's a big list of things that you can learn about. Um, there's one thing that I've highlighted here, uh, which is why I've gathered you around here, is actually we're going to go and try and go through some of these here, these aspects and these considerations um, as a role play. So uh, we're going to be, um, so that maybe, yeah, yeah, we're going to be rolling up our sleeves. I've rolled up my sleeves already. Or well, you're wearing short sleeves. Very good, you came prepared. Uh, but we're going to go role play. Don't worry, it's not going to be, it's, it's not a test. It's just going through the motions of some of the things that uh, we're going to be talking about today. Okay. So uh, the next 75 minutes, but maybe even 50 minutes because you know, we usually we can stretch or, or, or move this in and out. It's going to look like this. So we talk about hiring, culture, and fit. There's only going to be five minutes of that. We're going to, I'm going to be talking about uh, capability and screening and diversity and inclusion. Okay, just five minutes or so. Um, then after that, then we'll be forming our teams. You've done that already, so you've already saved 10 minutes because we did that before we started. Um, by the way, if you see boxes like this, this is activities, so don't worry. This part here, I'll just be talking. And you can drink your tea and coffee. Uh, good skills in that. Uh, we're talking about expectations of purpose. And then the rest of this is something called a key scenario matrix. By the way, when I talk about stars here, I'm hoping that it's different it's the kind of stars that you're thinking about right now in terms of teams. Uh, the key scenario matrix is about team structures, skills assessment, uh, lots of graphs for that. But, but again, don't worry. Uh, motivation retention. And that after this one here, then you can go back to listening. So you can relax again. Uh, words and language, communication oil, and then uh, succession, growth, network, letting go people, or pushing them out, however you want to talk about it. Does, make, does this sound right? Okay, I'm not, I'm not talking too fast. Shall I talk faster? Shall I talk more in a New Zealand accent? Okay, right, team. Not the thing above. Uh, you can probably, you, it's probably hard to see that. A group of players forming one side of a competitive game of sport. You've already heard my thoughts about that. Um, I'm going to change my mind later on, right at the end. But for now, believe me when I say it's not about that. It's about team of being two players or more, whether you're a product owner, a manager, or otherwise. And the first bit, uh, this is still me talking, hiring cultural fit. This will go pretty quick because actually um, you, you have managers amongst you, so you already know about all the basics of teams. You're here for the extra stuff. So when we talk about what are the design aspects to this then, I'm going to be talking about what are the human aspects and what are the things that we, you, we can do, such as visualizing. Imagine if, for example, our team, uh, the, the life cycle of a team, which you saw previously, was a, 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 a customer journey. And th those are the two aspects of my thinking about this in a design sense. Okay, um, in, this, in, the, in the next three minutes, it's about getting designers to hire designers. It's about quality, really. So maybe this gentleman or this gentle lady um, in, ter in terms of hiring, being human and social, uh, screening in versus screening out. I'll explain that a little bit more when I get to that. Uh, diversity and inclusion, big theme. Um, I used to work for a firm called Microsoft, and uh, they're big on diversity and inclusion. Um, I'm quite sad that I left it because, because of that, but uh, I've, I've, I've joined a... Oh, by the way, did you see the keynote at 2 o'clock with Dan McCoskey? Yes, yes. So I work for Dan now. So I'm part of, so this is why it's not there anymore, but I, I joined Dan's group six weeks ago. Um, because I joined his group six weeks ago, then I've got a couple of pictures about the exercises that we're going to be asking you to do um, that I did with my team there. So you can see whether or not the theory, you know, holds water. Uh, and then stars. Okay, uh, just one slide on this. Uh, obviously, and then looking to yourselves, good quality design. Maybe. Okay, not really. I'm hoping that you will see this and think, maybe that's not good design or otherwise. Um, the only point here, um, and forgive me also because I'm speaking, my notes are up there. I'm just going to be doing this like live, is that yes, you should get, you know, so, so even though the next 60 minutes or so 
It's going to be talking about the human aspects. Even though it's about the soft skills, we don't forget that there is a quality here, that there is a quality bar about getting, so, so yes, get re, if you're a product owner or manager, but you have access and you're hiring design folks in, get advice and counsel from someone who's from, from design. Um, uh, and and, the, and the, the human part, uh, this is actually uh, Alberta's, so, so every now and again, I'll, I'll forget, but this is me stalking. If I'm over this side, this is Alberta talking. I'm just trying to listen and channel here. This is Alberta's first job description that we, she, she, she uh, I'm not allowed to say how long ago it was, but she said that this was her first job description. And when she was trying to read it, she said, well, I can't get through all of this. And so again, just be human, she said to me. I said, okay, but that's just a normal point, right? Be human, yeah, okay, fine. Just make it easy though. So if you're looking for designers to add to your design team, make it easy for them to understand what, you, what you're looking for. For sure, you're going to have creative technologists that understand development as well, such as some of these things here, but just be human about it. And when you're human, then also use human channels to uh, recruit. Uh, you know, so she, this was here again, looking for dot, 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 So instead of the list that we just saw, which has had all of these words in here, she was thinking about outcomes. So there's a little bit of humanness to it, but actually she also had uh, outcomes in mind, like folks that did this, that, and the other. That's all. Uh, she went, yeah, and then she had this sort of response and so forth. And uh, the other sort of source, of course, as well as all the books that you'll read about going to, um, uh, you know, hiring uh, forums and so forth, is uh, your, your friends. You know, and you're, you know, the folks that, if you know a designer, then who are their friends, hire from this. And of course, here. Yes, that is here. Actually, it's the next room next door. This is a, a great way. I'm not looking for a job because I've just started one uh, you know, with, with Dan. But uh, yes, of course, these networking places. So these are in addition to um, those other channels in, uh, that you, you would use. I did, I did used to work for Microsoft. So two months ago, I left. So I started with Lloyd's Banking Group six weeks ago. So I had a two-week break. My last hire was this person here. So you can, I, I haven't got his name up, um, but his name is Sean. He's on, this is his public uh, profile on LinkedIn, so he's all good with sharing this. Um, and he joined in February 2019. He was my last hire into the group that I used to work for at Microsoft. Um, and I'm putting this up here because I've got at the top screen in versus screen out. Um, when we usually hire people, then there's a screening process. Oh, okay, what's the filtering? Give me the, give me the resumes or the CVs. Um, what's their portfolio like? Etc. Um, one of the last things that the human resources folks at Microsoft were talking about, and Sachin Nadala, the CEO, was talking about, was we've shifted, or they've shifted, I have, to, I have to switch now. They have shifted from a screening out to a screening in mentality. And what does that mean, I asked, or figuratively, I asked. And it's looking for the things that actually are the things that you would, would make you want to hire this person, versus looking through CVs and so forth with the mentality of, Oh, they don't have this, or they don't have, ha, have that. So there's a tiny mind shift happening at places like Microsoft, for example, which is a little bit more about the human side. Um, so you can see that he's now a user experience architect. I used to be one of those at Microsoft. But if I press the slide, then the things that I was really interested in was, oh, OK, you were a musical engineer, and you have a music background. Not only that, but you used to be a carpenter. If I go back again, uh, oh, yeah, the, like he spent 15 years at a place that manufactures boxes out of cardboard. So actually, not, not really someone you think, this is a designer that I want to hire into a team that goes out onto client situations and so forth. But the things that I saw were curiosity. The things that I saw in the portfolio was a deep, deep passion, enthusiasm for design. So even though I said, use designers to hire designers, actually, it's not the fact that they went to design school. Look for that curiosity and that passion, enthusiasm. So, like you know, we're, we are actually all designers. So there was a trick question that I had earlier about are we, we are designers. So even me, I went through design school. I, I'm I'm totally bought into screening in and looking for the reasons to hire versus to screen out. Okay, next slide. I think there. Okay, um, we've heard before in many of the talks already, and I think Dan talks a lot about diversity and inclusion as well. Um, the talk that was just here pre previously also talked a little bit about. Um, unconscious bias and bias in machine learning and data and so forth. Um, it's all of these things. Um, even your height, am I tall enough? Or otherwise, um, or your sex, or whether you know, you're pregnant or otherwise. So all of these discriminations are there. And again, coming from the Microsoft side, then yes, diversity and inclusion is something which is not only being more human from our teams, but that sensitivity and those sensibilities that we develop within teams, again, not only be more human, but actually, you know what, they're helping us with, and let me just get, go beyond this, um, with addressable market. Okay, so not really Alberta and Philip, but actually if I'm designer and then I put on the business hat 
actually, uh, Microsoft, for example, and others as well, it's not only about being a good person in the world so that people like us. Actually, you know what? You're increasing your addressable market. So um, bring all the, way, all, that, all, all the way back down to teams then. It's in our teams, do we have different perspectives and different points of view that allow us to, for example, see, um, you know, have an accessible controllers for Xbox. Um, that's, that's more recent. It's going the wrong way. Or uh, you're probably familiar with this. There's, this is, this is more, more, more old. This is older. This is probably about 20 years old where uh, um, a kitchen tools uh, uh, company was interested in what they call universal design, making design something which is much more uh, uh, open to different perspectives. Like, for example, someone who doesn't have, who's a bit older, um, or, or maybe doesn't have a, like, such good hand skills in there. But if, if you go back even further, then actually closed captioning, uh, in other words, the text on screens, that was also the, uh, the result of people that were um, hearing impaired. So have, having that come out as a service and so forth. But now, of course, you go to an airport and it's great. Or you go to a bar and you can see that there or you want to do something else while you're lo looking at things. So closed captioning is another example of pe what people call universal design. This is a little bit of design jargon, but also uh, inclusive design. So they're slightly different, but uh, if you talk to a designer who is trained in schools or gone to a course, which is all good. But actually, so the diversity inclusion, not only is it about being a good human, um, not only is it about having good teams and good perspectives, but actually you are thinking about the addressable market. And if you talk to Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, that's his primary thing, is that actually not only about that, but it's about, it's about making money too. Okay, wrong way again. Enough of that. Uh, the stars that I was talking about um, was the stars. So not so much the rock stars in terms of design, but um, if you read a book called The First 90 Days, and if you're a manager, you've probably come across it. Yes, three, three nods. Um, inside there, then, there's a concept called stars, and that's to do with what kind of company am I working for? And I would say that as well as what kind of company, what's the team that I'm working for in what sort of situation? So the stars is uh, your startup, turn around, dot, 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 you can read the rest for yourself. There's a little bit of, uh, hot, actually, yeah, there, there was a little bit of highlight, it's probably, I can't see it now. But you have different challenges if you're in a situation which is a startup that might inform what kind of range and profile of skill sets you'll want. Do you want the folks that really, really have get up and go? Do you want the all-rounders in a startup because you have lack of resources, et cetera? So there are some considerations there. So the stars that I'm talking about, not so much the design stars or the rock stars, but actually what sort of organization do you work on and what sort of team do you want to have uh, in, in, you know, to, to, be, to be part of? Okay. Uh, section two, and I think that was about six minutes. Yeah, faster? Okay, not quite falling asleep yet. Uh, building design team and hearing design, 15 minutes. Uh, and actually, this is about two things. There's a wedding proverb. Um, you, it, may just, it may just be a Western one, I don't know. Um, but it, there's also about aligning expectations. And um, warning, we're going to be starting to do some stuff in a minute. Okay, the first wedding is, uh, there's a, there's, there's a uh, wedding proverb that I've heard before, which is, oh, when you get married, you've got to wear or bring something, something old, something new, something borrowed, or something blue. Have you heard this before? Okay, a few, a few more nods. Um, I asked Alberta, because this is her, 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 her thing here. I said, well, what, what, what is, I, I got the rest of the slides, but what about blue? She said, forget about the blue. I said, oh, okay, you've only got three quarters of a, of a wedding proverb then. Okay, so when you're putting to get these teams together, she says, is that make sure you've got someone old. So this balance that she talks about, um, I'm allowed to say uh, I'm old because it's about me, um, but yes, I've been working for, I've got gray hair, um, it's, it is real, uh, and, and the black is real as well. Uh, so some, something old is about experience. Um, again, you'll want to modify it regarding whether you're a startup or otherwise, but wisdom and then having that historian who is part of the organization allows you to then integrate with the rest of the organization, or it, may, it might be wisdom about design, maybe, maybe not, but actually someone who has got a head and knows how to work with the organization, uh, the borrow, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, something, what was it? Borrow? <laughs> new. Okay. The new is young people. So instead of the old people, then um, all of you youngsters, and you're supposed to chuckle at that point um, as well. And the youngsters is so that you have that fresh understanding, that fresh, that fresh I was going to use the word blood, but that fresh thinking uh, that, that comes from. And, and also, actually, it might be that you're, you know, your market uh, as well. So even though I've been in this game for a long, long time, um, you know, I, I try and I try and suck the young blood from the young people from around me. Okay, next one. Uh, something borrowed. 
Uh, one of the things also with teams, and this may or may not be the case, it might be in your own situation, or it might be the folks that you work with, uh, borrow people. And what we mean by that is have contract staff. So as well as your permanent team, you'll probably need to surge and then uh, shrink or desurge, uh, whatever it might be. Uh, and also there might be specialism. So there's probably going to be the core team. You can't, I mean, oh, no, you can't, sorry, this is me suggesting. Oftentimes it's difficult and you don't have the resources to hire a full-time staff. Um, you, have to, you have to sort of concentrate on what your core cap capabilities are in your capacity. Uh, but, you know, so the borrowing is like, you know, use freelancers and so forth. Okay, we're nearly, we're nearly going to get to some, some work. Expectations and purpose. I said earlier that I had joined Dan McCoskey's team at Lloyd's Banking Group about six weeks ago. Um, three weeks in, I had a session, and that session was a purpose and alignment session, um, and it was about expectations. Uh, this is a real slide from that. You can see that I've tried to fake the other, the other people. Um, but uh, if you look up there, then there's something, actually, let's get closer. Uh, not that one there. Uh, it, it's probably very, very hard to read. And this here, I'm going to show you the, uh, the table in a second. But that says, uh, as, as well as the things which will be on this side, which I'll, I'll show you in a second, this says, what, what am I really thinking? So <laughs> what are my expectations? But actually, what am I really thinking about being here? And so we just starting to get underneath the covers of what your expectations are. And then actually, this one here says, uh, what book would I like to write? Uh, this, 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 this expectations chart is uh, it's, it's pretty simple, but it's just doing the exercise in the open with a new team or maybe a new, a new group of people. Um, you know, who I am. In fact, actually, let's go to the next slide. What it is is me. So this is what I did with, with my team. Um, and I think it's a useful, it's, that's it. I mean, it's so simple. You don't, you don't even have to have a printout. It's who am I, but also what's the role that I have? Um, and then what are my expectations? When I usually ask people what their expectations are, whether it's like a customer or, or a client, or in this case, it's with my team, then they'll give me one or two or three answers. One is, oh, I want to save the world. I say, that's great. What do you want to do today? Uh, uh, and, and then, the, or they might say, yeah, I, I really, really want to, uh, I, want, I want to finish and get out of this meeting because, because it's not my time zone and I'm, and I'm yawning. Um, and I say, that, that's fine, but what do you want to do for tomorrow? So in other words, there are different levels of answer to, to, to this here, which is why there's more than one, one question. When I answer this myself, then I would say, okay, then supposedly I'm one, one of the team leads in the group that we're, this is, this is half real, and I did still want to save the world. Um, and that uh, my expectations and aims for that particular purpose session was to help my team, my company achieve great human-centric products and services. Okay, pretty normal. Uh, but also to help my team be happy and amazing at the same time. Okay, so this is all stuff that you would hear and understand and so forth. But the thing which is about the ambitions or what would I want to write the book on? What's the new thing that I want to talk about? What did I say? Do good in the world by championing inclusion, diversity, and design. Actually, if you really, really want to ask what I'm thinking, coming from my recent experiences and so forth, that's the thing, that's the shtick that I internally inside me want, want to bring. So this here is a little bit more open. Uh, and then inculcate, push in, and embed design into business. If I really want to write the book, and I was talking to some IBM design folks um, earlier today, where, you know, whenever designers, um, and actually also engineers these days, they have conversations with their management, they say, okay, what's the bridge to business? We have to start with the business. We, 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 if we talk about OKRs, we measure what matters, then it's all about uh, all ma making work visible. What's that kind of work, and how does it relate to objectives and business? So absolutely, how do we, the, but this still hasn't quite been, I mean, for designers, designers, we haven't quite written that book about how does, how does business um, interface and, and, and bridge, like what, what are the metrics and so forth. Okay, save the world as well. Have we formed our team yet? Now we form our team. Okay, um, so that template that you just saw, I'm going to bring it back again. This is what I'd like us to have a go at because we're role playing. Is this feeling comfortable? So the folks, either if you're out at the, at the back, either we have another table, um, but that's what these are for, so I'm going to hold this up now. So uh, even though you all know each other, you, you two work together. I know that because I was doing Nemo Washi. Um, we'd like to do this sheet with us on the table. Is this making sense? Yep. Go. Okay, I'm going to bring back that template, and I'm going to be here. So wait, this the, I think I'm going to the wrong. 
no, let's go back. You can tell this is my slides. Okay, making sense? Okay, you might have to stand up. You might have to write large. Um, it looks like you've, it looks like you're a scribe because you're next to this. No, I know, one sheet for the table. So yeah, in fact, actually, I'm going to sort of, if you don't mind, I'm going to just try and gently kick us off. Uh, because the other sheets will be, for, no, no, you can put that away. The other sheets, well, there are three more exercises that uh, we might want to go through. Uh, so actually, it looks like you're scribing. And what I'd like us to do is to draw that table and then just go and, th and, then, and then maybe just speak the answers and then have someone write it down. And again, it looks like you've volunteered. <laughs> I think I you have volunteered. <laughs> That's cheating. Okay, making sense? Who's the scribe here? You've got a pen. You put the pen down. I saw you put the pen down. But you had it in your hand. You've, you're now scribe. I have to replicate that. You have to replicate that there. So that's going to give, so that two minutes that it takes to replicate that will give these folks time to think about what, they're going, what their answer is. You have more people. Are you sure you don't want to do another team? You're sure you don't want to do another team because you want this guy to do the work? Excellent. That's team spirit. Okay, how are you doing? Doing very well. Very, very neat handwriting. We're all looking at your spelling. Is this making sense so far? It's a very, very gentle start to the afternoon. Maybe we could go bring cookies in. Shall I go get some? Are they still out there? No. <laughs> Oh, you're doing you. Okay, very good. Money. I trust everything now because that's also what it says on the name badge. As we're waiting for this, what was the expectation you had of coming to the session? I can, I can bring it back on the slide if you want to see it. Yeah. Does, design, design is a de designing te teams? What? I can't even remember. It's not my slide deck. Design teams or design exercise, okay. What was your, what was your, what was your expectation coming to this? So how do we Okay. 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 Right. Okay. So some of these questions, let's, let, let us answer them as you're going. But but please go around the table first. I'm going to come back. Yep. Uh, probably not. But we can talk afterwards. <laughs> okay. Um, I think is your role. So role. as we as we go around, then well, the first start is what's your expectation in the role that, that you, because we're at the moment we are all naked right now. We 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 don't have any idea about who. So, naked is the wrong word. We are still <laughs> we don't know about each other. So actually, this first this is a good question. You know, like what what is what is it what is it what, that you do now, and what's your expectations on your team or otherwise? So it might be that you're all managers. I expect actually that most of you are managers because you've come to this for this. Um, and then what your expectations and ambition are. And actually, this exercise might then start in the next ones to think about, well then, to your question, well how do we manage our expectations in terms of the teams that we run and so forth. So, sorry, that was a very long answer. What your current role is and your expectations of that role or your understanding of that expectation. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, you're nodding. I'm gonna come over here. You folks have done something different, right? No, no, no. It's whatever. It's whatever it's what, yeah. So when I ask this question, usually, then people will give us those different levels of questions of answer. So it doesn't have to be. It, it's whatever the scope of your ambition might be. It doesn't have to be a life ambition. But if it is, that's fine too. Yeah. So for this one, for this table over here, then they asked that question, which was, well, what are we putting down? And so we we gravitated towards just put down your role now. 
So if you're a manager, then put that down and what your expectations of that role are for yourself. Um, and then what we'll do as we go through this exercise is share that learning amongst ourselves. Maybe we have different expectations from other managers. So this one here, because we're brand new, we are not a team, <laughs> we just met each other, they just let, let us talk a little bit about ourselves for, for now. Is it making, making sense? What have we got so far? Um, yeah, I think you lost your most legible scribe, but uh, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Yeah, okay. And just as and Sean is, so just as Sean is writing that down, I was also asking at that table, what were your expectations coming to the session? So this is a different question, but what were you expecting? So some of the answers that we had over there, oh, to learn a little bit about design thinking, uh, not really, but we can talk about that. Uh, to learn a little bit about what's the difference that a design team has instead of, say, a normal team, whatever that is. We'll talk a little bit about that, but, but probably not much. It's much more about, uh, if I summarize, I think, what the talk is about, you can go and read books on team management. You can go and read books on these things here. Um, the design approach is what are the human sensibilities for any team, not just a design team, that may be useful uh, that, you know, that, that, that we've learned over, over time. Yeah. I'm trying to make friends here. <laughs> okay. How's it going? You have much tidier writing. <laughs> Does that mean that you have a tidier mind? I don't know. Is everyone else reading what? <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> I love the ambition. After we do this, it would be useful for us to read out what this means. And remember, we're just role playing. We're just sort of getting into the muscle of doing this. Scrum Master, you know rugby. Okay, is that everybody? That's everyone? Are you folks done yet? You have more people. You're finished? I don't need the pen. <laughs> I'm the one talking. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you folks need some help, because those guys are finished. <laughs> I wonder if we have a flip chart. We don't have any stands. Do we have any stands? Oh, great. No, nope, we're going to put those things up. Do we have any tape or blue tack? Uh, no. just, just to put it like this, just, just to put yeah, it here. Yeah. Just one, thank you, thank you. I'm just trying to stall for time so that, uh, you know what? You could probably have more than one piece of paper and write at the same time. Yeah. How about that? There's another piece of paper underneath there. I've, uh, on, on the Kanban board, I've discovered that there's a bottleneck over here. We might need to, <laughs> you folks are done. You're talking about dinner. <laughs> oh, you know each other. There you go. There you go. That was the whole point of the workshop, right? Okay.
Um, do people mind if I take photographs? Is it okay to take photographs here? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, what can I take photographs of? I, I want to take a picture of the people that finished first. <laughs> but, but then a picture of the people that are more thoughtful. Great, perfect, thank you. Okay, you folks are done, right? Let's put this up. Let's put this up here. Because what's going to be great, once they're done, is we'll talk through what we, sorry, yeah, here we go. Uh, over two, I think, is okay. Because, we'll, yeah, because it'll be easier to, great, thank you. Cool. Okay, product owner. How are you doing? I, I, promise, I promise that we kick people out early today. So, <laughs> I can tell you're really enjoying this exercise. You're supposed to be with family? Supposed to be with family tonight? You should go now, right? You should you should come back for this later on. Those guys are talking about dinner. <laughs> How are we doing here? Last one? Okay. Luckily, I don't have very much to talk about. <laughs> because, though, you're already in user experience, you know about design thinking. Yeah, but I was just trying to see how we align this session to design thinking, but it's fine. Okay, okay. Okay. I used to work for a firm where uh, it, was, it was part of the... Used to, I used to work for a firm called IDEO. Yeah, okay. So I used to work for them, and when I was there, we didn't call it design thinking. We just called it design. But then it became popular, and then Harvard talked about it. <laughs> and then they started teaching courses on it, and then you get certification. But uh, interesting, yeah. That's now a thing. I think that over the last 25 years, design has been much more commoditized. It's, much, it's not special anymore. I, yeah, I think that it also has a little bit... Yes, I think you're absolutely right. I think also that it has a little bit more intellectual framework behind it. So they can talk about it, and yes, you can read about it in, uh, in business and so forth. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Um, we, I'm going to ask everyone now to, sta to maybe, maybe, well, maybe not stand, like maybe, uh, maybe you, because you're closest. Could you please read these out for all of us? Yeah, good luck. Okay, uh, and also please listen. Please, please give attention to our volunteer. So, uh, <laughs> is a product owner, and his aim is to have continuous growth and be helpful. Be happy. Be happy. And like the ambition, song. His ambition is enjoy and stay connected with, with people. With people, nice. You, you were listening for the first five minutes. Do we have any translators in the audience? Yeah. Features, yep. customers. Yep. Uh, yeah, what customers really need. And use the 8021. Okay. Do you mind if I ask questions during the, when you say be more relevant, relevant to what? The industry. Okay. 
Thank you. Please continue. Especially tonight. You need to find a family to eat, to eat with. <laughs> okay, is anyone local that's offering Sean? Okay, we'll ask again. We'll ask again at the end when they know you. <laughs> uh, sorry, it was customer. Uh, so hopes and dreams, right? Okay, yep. Okay, that's done. Uh, next is uh, Ravi, uh, UX team manager. Um, his aim is to make a better team. Okay. Ambition is to create a positive impact. Nice. Okay. Kastub, uh, that's me, Scrum Master, currently taking up a new role. Um, my aim is to improve team efficiency and to satisfy the customers. My ambition is to, how to, to see how to sustain and uh, keep learning and see how I can grow forever, constantly. Rajiv, right? Uh, current role is a director, PE, product engineer. Okay. Wow, yeah. director. Current <laughs> aim is create a high performing team and deliver. His ambition is to go driving all around the world. Wow, nice. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, team two, or the sheet. Okay. Let's let's go through this. Um, thank you for volunteering to talk it through. <laughs> thank you very much for volunteering for talking it through. We're just going to put it on top of this, if you don't mind. So I've got one, one piece of tape here. I've got another piece of tape, if you don't mind taking that for that side. Okay, so let's talk through these here. So this is me, Manas. I'm a project manager. Uh, let me get another piece of tape. Because uh, we didn't make good use of that resource then. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, okay. Nor did, nor did I. This was my side. Okay, thank you. That should be good. Okay, so this is me, Manas. I'm a project manager. My expectation is to deliver project within budget and schedule. And I want to save 10% of the budget assigned to me for every project. Sunil, product owner. Help the customers understand what they want. Help the developers know what they are going to build, is it? And make the products that solve the world problems and improve life. Ramakanta, product owner. Define roadmap of the product line. Support team uh, in, in customer required. Customer satisfaction with quality product. Amrut, director engineering. Enable continuous portfolio growth. Lead the entire team to success. Bring about better cultural channel and technology innovations. Ambition is to make at least some positive change in the society with the experience and knowledge gained. Mohan, who is an architect. Technical leadership and ensure development team to deliver scalable and performant, performance solution. Technical leadership can provide innovation to deliver ahead of time with quality. Great. We need to do the tape thing again. I'm the holder of the tape. I pull it all together. I'm the glue. <laughs> is this all? It was it? Okay. Just, just two more. Okay. Julia, who is an architect. Provide technical solutions and leadership. Technical leadership is the ambition. Sripat, solution director, to build solutions for client requirements and solve business problems with right technical and innovative cost-effective means. Manish, who is a senior manager, to make my team deliver better products and value to customer expectations, to grow myself along with the company I work with. Great, that's it, that's everyone. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, you can stay standing if you want. You could also, oh, thank you. I should clap, clap you. Okay. As you were reading those out, and thank you for reading those out, uh, I was demonstrating that I can have even worse handwriting than anyone else. Um, but what I was listening for was, okay, well, actually, let me, let me go back a little bit. So uh, first of all, it, it helped us get to know each other a little bit. 
So instead of maybe give me a story, actually we wanted some of the real life things. I gave you the model for actually what's our purpose in life a little bit. And this is just role play. You know, we don't really, we're not really a team. But, the, but it was just a little, little exercise. It took five minutes or 15 when I'm talking. It took five minutes just to get into the team. Okay, what's your expectations? And actually, secretly, I'm listening for, are those expectations in line with the business? Because I'm hard. I'm not just a soft designer. I work in a business. And what I was writing down when I was running down here were things like growth and saving money, uh, cost efficiencies, uh, be relevant to the industry. Uh, there were three customer mentions, like being customer relevant. And I, now, I can't even read this, but the oh, customer hopes and dreams, I remember the, the, the concept. Um, better team, portfolio growth, um, high performing team, scale solutions, technical leadership. So from, from those, those things that I was hearing, what I was doing in my head and what you're, you could do in your head as you talk through your teams, what is your hopes and dreams? How do they match with what do you really want to do? You know, what are the things that I can do as a team leader to make you happy? But also, the director, <laughs> it's about you know, making, you know, it's deliver as well as have, have the team happy. Okay, end of that exercise, it was only five minutes, very, very tiny concept, but something which is hopefully quick and practical if you want to get the teams aligned. Let's see what's next. Okay, done that already, team structures, more alignment. I've just, uh, so this here is, now that you've done that five minutes with your team, the next, time, the, next, the next thing is to do a little bit what I just did live for you. So you've already had the theory, and you've already done a little bit of the practice as well. You don't need to do this in, in, anyway. So, what, so, so from there, what we're secretly hearing and listening for is what are the business aims, and are they in alignment with, with the business? So again, this is hard, Philip, thinking about it, even though I was pretending to be soft, Philip, and asking for your hopes and dreams. I was actually thinking about both those things, which is, of course, what management is. We're, we're looking for metrics as well. Okay. And then from those, this is the next thing, the next piece of paper, is that I will typically then, and again, very, very, so simple, it's only on there, what are the key scenarios? Um, we had the question before, one of them was, was well, what's so different about a design team? Um, I'm not answering that question here, but actually we are stealing a little bit of what's the design process if we're thinking about teams as a continuous life cycle and as a continuous journey. What are the scenarios that we're going to live through? So a key scenarios matrix, I'll explain it, is, uh, and and actually, I have to go up for this one, I think, because I'm going to draw on it. So the key scenarios are three, 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 uh, three, three columns, three columns, people, settings, and tasks. And you, can, and you can read it there. So let me just see if I can do this live. I did practice, but the, the writing will be terrible, no doubt. Uh, okay, let's go to... It's working, right? You can see me? Okay. Yeah, so the people are uh, more than one person. Uh, the, these, are, these are androgynous people. Uh, and the, the, the people could be the roles. So you've already done that already. Like, in other words, I'm a product owner or so forth. If I'm thinking about the wider team, though, how does my team, so if this, if this is my team, how do I interface with? Um, it might be that, actually, who are my stakeholders? Um, who's my internal customer? Who's my, <laughs> that's really bad writing. <laughs> who's my external customer? You know, we had some things down there, such as what are the hopes and fears of these. So in terms of the people ecosystem, who are they? And there'll be, there'll be different sets of different people. Okay. The, the, second, the second column is settings. And settings, three things. And you saw that earlier before. The first one is where are they physically? What's your physical setting? Right now, you know, we, we, we are sitting around a table in, in, a, in a hotel. Um, and, uh, and, and, and so that's the physical setting. And then the second part of this is what's your digital setting? What am I packing in terms of technology? Um, right now, we probably, we probably have our phones with us. And we, we probably have our laptops, but our laptops are in our bag. So effectively, all we've got is our phones. And then the third one is what is your connectivity? Is it broadband? Is it Wi-Fi? Is it Ethernet? Is it mobile cell phone? Um, is it bad? Is it zero? So the connectivity is the thing in the middle. So the the settings one is three things. It's your physical location, where are you? Um, the, what is your digital setting? What are you packing in terms of, you know, it might be a laptop or a phone or nothing. And what is your connectivity like? In other words, can you connect to the, the outside world? And the task, of course, is task. Like, I need to write a report or whatever it might be. That there is, is all you need to know about the, but the basic, the, the basic uh, theory. One that I did earlier, and I'll see if I can come down again now, put this back, is... Uh, 
Uh, okay, I need to move this. Just move it to the left. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is highly interactive. I can, I can tell the director is up for action. Thank you, sir. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Um, thank you. Okay. From those, 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 those concepts. So, okay, we've done our who are you and what do you really want to do? And does it align with the business? And do I need to refactor any of that? Um, from those, from those uh, aims or the roles, let's think a little bit wider now. Who are the folks that we need to interact with? Again, applying a designerly approach. What are the key scenarios? Who are they? Uh, so your role might be, um, maybe that's design. Maybe design is the role within the wider team. Uh, de developer, or you're a stakeholder, um, or uh, you're a work colleague, et cetera. So who, who are they all in terms of who you work with? And then what are their settings? And the top one is I in an office, like the picture that you saw before, maybe not a rugby field, uh, but laptops, and then generally pretty good connectivity because it's usually on Wi-Fi, whatever. Um, it might be that I'm remote, I'm working from home. In my last job, I was always working from home and remote. I, I was always on Skype for business or, it was, or, or, or Teams these days, um, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're Microsoft. Uh, so, so, so absolutely, the setting was there. In fact, I was, uh, this is irrelevant to the story, but I, uh, before digitalization, I actually built a curtain behind me because my room was so messy for all my video calls. Um, or you're on a plane, or you're here at a conference, uh, you're in the hotel room. So what is that setting in, for, your, for your team? Very, very often, there's going to be a mix of remote, in situ. Again, my last team was all remote. We, we were global all, all the time. And then what are the tasks? Is it you're actually in the middle of a dev cycle? Um, are, you, are you in the field researching for the customer insights to understand what those hopes and dreams and instilling fears into customers? Um, are you designing wireframes, et cetera? So what are those tasks? So we're going to switch a little bit now. And, um, and I'm, I'm going to ask to see whether you can have a discussion about if we were a team, because you've had now four, 14 minutes to get to know each other. If we were a team, or you want to talk a little bit about what, what these scenarios might be, the, what, what um, just go through, through, through the role play. But before I set you loose on the second piece of paper, then uh, I want to tell you a little bit about these, why is it called the key scenario? So this here I found is useful where, okay, people, you haven't met each other. What, what, are, what are the people? So, and it resets, making sure that, hey, remember, designer, you're not, just, you're not just for the external customer, you're for our internal stakeholders as well. Um, remember, developer, you're not just for dot, 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 dot. So it just gets it on a piece of paper, uh, visible, it's a little bit like making work visible. It's making teams visible, um, to paraphrase that book title. So it might be that scenario one, which might be the one that you, you say, what, what are the scenarios you think about? And then someone will say, well, yeah, uh, I'm a stakeholder, and actually I'm, I'm always here, wherever here is. It's a different place, maybe, um, on the road. Or m maybe if, if, okay, so I've just joined a bank. If I were to do this, which I have, some of my folks are in a high street branch where they're in a retail situation. So th those are the parts. So what are they doing? That's, that's what they're doing. They have zero connectivity because they're not allowed to have their phones when they're there with, with, uh, with money and, and the customers, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But then they, they have to do. So in other words, working through this, this is candidate scenario one. OK, what's another one? What's another scenario? And then it will be, oh, well, maybe it's the designer and the developer. And actually, they're working remotely from each other, but they're doing this. And so, so this is one way for, OK, now that we've had the expectations, move aside. The next 15 minutes, I'm pretending here, is tell us what our expectation of the ecosystem is. What is the scenarios that we have to deal with? When you, when you get this from your folks, then as a manager, you will know there's some missing. And that's the time where you can say, oh, yeah, what about dot, 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 dot. Yeah? Like, so again, I can see some, some, some nods. I can see in people nodding inside. Making sense? And then there's, I think there's one more slide. Yes. I, I made the little theater and the role play around, oh, thank you very much for your expectations. And then I wrote in very, very messy writing the things like the, the business aims. Once we have these scenarios down, then again, wearing the business hat instead of the team hat, as a, as a team manager, what are the highest priority scenarios for my team? And the way to get to the highest priority scenarios is making sure they align to the business aims. So going through and walking through those two, those two items just helps get alignment and understanding. And, and, and you might discover, you know what? You're on the wrong team because there's no alignment between these different things and, and so forth. Okay, this is the scenario outline. 
Oh, actually, we'll do that first. Uh, paper number two. Uh, you, and you can probably, if you've got two tables, two teams here, then yeah, two pieces of paper. Um, the task is, if I go back, is to, is to do that. So just like we did for the attend your expectations, may we now please do this for five minutes. Making sense? Yeah? Um, well, I think that you can, I think, I think that actually, if you have a little bit of a discussion about what, 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 what areas you work, work in, uh, again, this is just role play. Pick a company and then imagine that you're part of a team and just put yourself in that mindset. Maybe you put yourself, not as a manager, but you put yourself as one of the people that reports to you. Does this make sense? So uh, let's, let's, do, let's do the exercise live. Um, do you mind if I asking what, what industry do you work in? Or, or, or division, yeah. Or software? Okay, okay, and? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so, so you two can snap to anything that we think. What industry? Software development for industrial Okay. Oh, you know each other. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You don't have to pretend. You are a team. Okay. I, actually, so, yeah. Well, in fact, actually, if you're a team and you, are you, do you know each other? Any more people know each other? Okay. I, I would. I may, maybe if, if, if you four have a piece of paper, snap to what these folks are. You have to pretend like you're part of their team and then go through the exercise. But these folks are the authority on what's, what's reality. You, you folks are doing this already. So going through who are the people that you work with um, and uh, what the settings are and so forth and what the scenarios might be. Does it make sense? You're nodding, okay. I'm assuming nodding is good. Okay, I'm gonna run away to this table. And as I was saying that, you don't know, so, so maybe Maybe, 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 yeah, three and three. Maybe like you, you have, okay, if we were a company, you have to think about it. Um, are you all consultants or what, do you work in a particular industry? Banking. You're banking, healthcare, insurance. <laughs> okay, so that means you could probably snap to, you have to have a bun fight about whether it's healthcare or, or financial services or banking. What about yourselves? Okay, so let's, let's telecoms. So, so do you mind if we make it telecoms? Because you, you know, you're consultants, you, you, you do anything, right? Okay, so telecoms is the situation. This person is the, the, the authority in, in that, but then to sort of work through the, acti the activity of, okay, what are the scenarios? Yeah, making sense? Okay, more nodding. I'm about to distribute the golden pieces of paper. Okay. And I'll make sure there's paper there too. Uh, no, no, no. I, yeah, so let's, let's work through this. Once you get the titles up, let's, let's try and work through this one. I'll sit down with you. Because I'm, I'm sure that you need the most help. No, just, no, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Okay, yeah, so who are the people? So you work together already, right? Yeah. What are the roles that you have on your people? You have to, you have to do the funny picture. Oh, the funny, funny picture's not there. You can do, yeah, yeah that's, that's perfect, yep. Um, please write the role underneath the, the, um, the icon, the beautiful icon. <laughs> okay. What other roles do you have in your immediate team? What sort of consultants? What kind of consultant? Who does the assessments Okay. Okay. So, so just yeah, yeah. So just keep writing those these roles down. BA. Okay. Yep. Okay. See, these these guys are racing ahead. They're going faster now. Okay. Cool. Is it technical architect? Okay. Solution architect. Infrastructure. Solution. You don't have front end. Oh, front, oh, back end. Okay. Okay. And may I ask? So this is probably the people that you work with directly. Uh, inside your team, are you are you part of the same team? Oh, okay, right, okay. You're pretending. Good role play. Um, okay. Uh, what about customers? What's, who who who's your customer? We directly don't talk to any customer. We talk to the product management. 
Okay, so your product manager should be there. I, I, I would say. I'm just gently, gently suggesting. And uh, do you have other internal customers? Because the product is a product manager, is it? I I'll call that an internal customer. Is that, is, that, is that, yeah. Do you have other internal customers? The only. Do you, do you have anyone talk to you? And are you the customer for anyone inside? Yep. Okay, nice. And, and do you do that very often? Okay, so what I would do is put that roll down because one of your scenarios is delivery, not delivery in or out. <laughs> I think you know what I mean, but it comes to you. Yeah, exactly. So there's one of the tasks. Okay, and then, and then the settings and so forth. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go to, you're, you're, you're good. Keep going. Settings, tasks. <laughs> How are you doing? You haven't even got the frame up. Wow. <laughs> That's, that's okay, because I'm here, I'm here. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I would use this person as the authority. So let me, be, let me join your team for one minute. Okay, um, who, are the people, who are the people that you, well, first of all, who are you? What's your role, I mean, sorry, which, which we had before. Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, over there we had your role, but can you remind me yeah, your role? Yeah, uh, UX, uh, UX manager. UX manager, okay, so a, a UX, put, may we draw the funny icon? Um, but, but better than that <laughs> for a person. And then uh, some symbol, a symbol. Yeah. Perfect. See that? Yeah, very good. Um, underneath there, can we put, uh, sorry, user experience. UX, please, underneath there. Okay. My next question is, um, who do you interact with in your role? Mm. In, in, yeah. Yeah. Product managers, product owners. Pro okay, product manager, owner, they go down there. And of course, uh, business product owner. Product manager, product owner. Yep, great. Yep, perfect, yep. And then other, so other questions that we had from that other table, just to sort of tease out who are the people that are in the people, is who might be in my team, because there might be different roles in my team, okay, that's fine. Um, who are the people then that my team interact with? Um, who are my internal customers? And then who am I a customer for, internally? Right? Um, if you're in uh, user experience, you might have a touch point with the external customer as well. Okay, so your external customer also goes on. So that, that, that's the role play in terms of who are the folks that... Internal customer, end users. Right? It could be that... It, it, well, okay, so an end user might be someone who uses the enterprise software for my, for my company. Right. It, it might be, but, but, it might, but if you're producing software in healthcare for an end consumer, then that might be an end customer. It might be, though, that you're delivering clinical systems and not end user systems, so your end user is the clinician or the doctor. It's, so we, it could be, have lots of different answers. So your end user could be someone who's in the, in the company. So the terms that I use is internal customer. You're, you're nodding um, because you like me, right? <laughs> but, but, but also, yeah, so external customer is the ones that are outside the organization. Um, another category, so I said before that there's usually three or four categories. One is, yes, in my team, what are the different roles? so that I can get them here, so that when I do the scenarios, I'm taking care of them and I'm thinking about what's the detail of that journey. Secondly, who, are my, who, who is my team interacting with, or the individuals? That might be internal customers that take work from me, so I produce an output which I give to them, or I'm, an, I'm, a, cust I'm a customer of somebody else, they give work to me. Um, so so, so that, that, that's that there. And then there's the external customer, which might be, might be B2C, so it might be clinicians, uh, in, a, in a healthcare setting, it might be the end consumer, so it might be an app for um, tracking diabetes uh, or, or, or blood sugar, for example. So those are end consumers. But typically, those are the categories. And there's one more, which is partners, which is, so, so my B, B, B2C, it would be, who, who am I rocking up with? You know, who, who do I need to have to deliver? So if you're a mobile phone company, if you're in telecoms, it might be my service providers in region. It might be the hardware handset people. Because all of these people, uh, we're just trying to get the ecosystem of what are the touch points in terms of people. They might be technology partners. They may be distribution partners. They might be marketing partners. Again, I'm just asking the question. This is making sense. Yeah. So those are the categories there. And then the settings, you've got it. Yeah. So this, how does this help? This? So let's switch here now that you're writing. And you, yeah, you've, did, you, did you decide banking or healthcare? This, 
Are you happy with banking? Are you happy with banking? Okay. <laughs> so this here is, the, okay, so again, the categories would be, right, what are the roles in my, if I'm, if, as a manager, am I concerned about my team? Yes. Then what are the roles of my team and what do they do and how do they interface? It won't, it won't usually be my team that interfaces with a whole another team. It will be those individuals that is a user experience person interfacing with the business analyst and so forth. So it's just getting those roles down. Yes. No, please. No, you're, you're, please do. Yes. What's next? Yes. Really, a really great question. Um, and in fact, actually, uh, maybe I should tell everyone. Absolutely. Yeah, don't, don't worry. I mean, these are really, really good questions, and I appreciate that. Um, so we just had uh, a really good question that I should have thought about. I'm just going to go here. Yeah. 70? 70. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Uh, well, that's really quick. <laughs> the thing, the question, the question was, why am I doing this? What, what's this key scenario for? Uh, and, why, why am I, and why am I going through these scenarios? And the intent is to go from here, once we've identified what is the key scenario, to this, this one here. And so the, uh, the output of this exercise is so that the team is aligned on what are our key scenarios? What are we doing here as a team? So the, 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 the extent of talking about it is about, let's go through the exercise so that everyone in the team knows. So, so the first one is alignment. Secondly, is making sure that the whole team knows what are our key scenarios? What are the ones that matter to us? Because you're gonna have, in the previous one, lots of scenarios. Oh, you know, I, you know what, I really want to do a lovely user interface design for this. If, it's, if it doesn't snap to the business aims and the key scenarios, you've got a tool to say, Please stop doing that. Please concentrate, concentrate on this. So that, that's the hard Philip talking about this. So, that, so that's, that, that's the second sort of part of this. But the step after this is to get to this page here. And this is the third thing. And I was just reminded that we had 17 minutes. And, uh, and I was shocked because time is going so fast. Or maybe for you it's going very slowly. But, uh, uh, so we're going to go, go faster. But this third thing, once we've got that, to use design as a design, design teams as a design exercise, what is the journey of the work that we go through? So for example, if it is creating a, if it is creating a design specification, um, is it, if it's doing user research so that we understand the hopes and dreams of our customer, if it's a UI design specification, handing off and so forth, uh, then in terms of the scenes, what are, what are the steps that, that go along with, with that? that our team understands so that we can design the detail of it. So I understand what are the things that are hiccuping us. So if role A says, you know what, it takes me three days to get the spec, or you know what, it's five days because I always have to go back and forth between understanding, and the design is never there because he's remote, and it's a different time zone and so forth. So to your question, great question, was what is all this for? Um, so the first one was trying to get out of people from your team, if you don't know it already, what really drives them? What is their internal purpose? And then secondly, wearing hard hat, making sure that it snaps to business alignment in a nice way. Um, the second this thing that we've just done that you have on your tables is what are the key scenarios? What, what is the work that my team does? So we've talked about purpose and alignment. How do we take that alignment and what is the work that my, my team does? And who are, the, who, are the, who are the folks that I give that work to and I take, take it in? And again, this exercise is merely just that you can get on a piece of paper, maybe in a team exercise, so that everyone knows. And then, and then if there's an intervention or a correction that you as a manager want to make, you've got the evidence there to, to act on, and it's in the open. And then the third thing, which is this one here, how do I then improve the journey? How do I improve my team? How do I understand the detail of how I do work in this workflow so that I can talk about this, that, and the other? So that was the round answer to, does it, does it make sense? Yeah. Um, and because we've only got about 10 minutes left or so, then, um, and, and this is just a role play, then we've gone through these different steps, and I'm going to crack on through some of the rest of this. Uh, so it might be all of these sorts of things, work estimation. Um, I usually have only the five. You don't have to go through everything unless you go into real detail. But you go through these because, again, this is, these are just exercises to understand if we apply design thinking a little bit to the journey of a team, then how do we understand the detail and then work with our own team to, to, to get it out? So, we've done all this already. I won't go through this stuff, because you, you're managers, you've seen this already. You've probably also, I'm gonna crack on through this. 
there is another sheet. Actually, I will spend, I'm going to spend my last five, five, five or ten minutes on this. Once, and I'll come back down again. Once we've done a little exercise to align our team and purpose, and they trust me, and they trust you. Once we've snapped that to business, um, to make sure that we're in alignment with the, the business. Once we've then done uh, the previous one, the one after that, which is what's the detail of our journey, so that we can identify what, what we can improve and what we can accelerate or otherwise. Um, then we know what are the skills mix that we want to support our business orientated uh, profile and outputs. Again, hopefully this is making sense. And so then the next, uh, and this is a, another, uh, you can take it away, we, we can give it to you. Um, but, but, but all it is, is then assessing from whatever the skills are through, through uh, uh, an assessment with, with it where you're this or that, but, uh, and, we, uh, and you'll, you'll have the PDF. So you can get the PDF of that, you can get the PDF of the first one, you can get the PDF of this. But once you've got the, um, uh, you're clear about what you want to do and the capabilities that you want, then this is pretty normal stuff. Um, I'm going to crack on through the rest of these things. This is when we did it with our team, or this is when Alberta did it with her team. And she was, uh, <laughs> all the names have been changed. There's not real names, so it's okay. Um, hopefully they're real skills. Um, but it gives her um, where she, she can see um, where people want to be versus where they are. So this is the next level of detail about having those performance, not performance, those management discussions with, with teams. Where do they want to be, whether it's user experience or otherwise, um, you know, for, and then where do they want to be in t the team in 12 months. So as a manager, you can start to get an idea if you map it in Excel, pretty easy because we all know Excel mostly. Then, okay, what is the visual, what it says, and what are the metrics for uh, skills assessment? I'm going to keep going through this because uh, you're... Uh, The, t the team did, the team. So um, we didn't go through an exercise, but one of the, uh, so as a manager, if you're a user, user experience person, um, if you're a uh, scrum master or so forth, you will know what are the capabilities and skills that you want. And so you, you will declare yourself within the team. If you do it within the team and, and they agree, then, uh, 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 then every, everyone knows what is seen as good, what does good look like. As a manager, if you see that you have a lot of people in a particular capability, uh, you may want to retrain some of them to fill a gap for something else. Um, and I said that versus fire them and get somebody else because we are kind people, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah, so the, the process that, we, that, that Alberta uses here, this is Alberta versus me, I have to put Alberta's hat on. But this, this is data from her team. Again, the, the names have been changed. But this is one of, the, one of the things that she used for, okay, how did we assess um, in, a, in, a, in a little bit more of a metric way versus, oh, I'm, I'm good at this, uh, or otherwise. And, and then it was about growth. So there'll be self-reporting, but there's also then a... Um, Normalization around that, and it'll probably then have the manager. Sir? You can make a clearer question, yeah. The green is where you are today. Yes. Where do you want to be in 12 months, or yes. is it yes. done now and then after 12 months? Uh, this is where she wants to be. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's where she wants to be. But when you do it in 12 months, you'll see <laughs> the next cycle, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but again, like these are all, I mean, I, I feel like I'm not telling you anything new, and I think I'm not. But what, what we've been trying to do is to think about what are some quick things that get right to the point that are not a big intellectual exercise, but hopefully they give us value in terms of understanding alignment and so forth. So I'll go back up to here. Have we got five minutes? We have nine minutes. Nine? Okay. Oh, I can slow down. <laughs> I, actually, that was, that, I think that was the question actually where... Where, where are you today? Where do you want to be? Et cetera. Okay, motivation retention. Uh, unless we work in HR, we probably can't control how much money we give to our team. Uh, so this is not really about the money part. The things that we can control are the things like you're saying, make, you know, keep the, the, the team happy. And there's two things. I think there's two things. 
yeah, language, la labels and language and communication. Uh, labels. When I talked about inclusive uh, cultures, um, then it's making it wel welcoming for people, not only about increasing the addressable market, but it's the words that we use. Uh, and, and again, at Microsoft, at other places, then, and at Lloyd's, actually, at Lloyd's Bank, then um, I'm learning that they want us to be very careful about the words that we use. You know, for example, is it really my, is there a sense of ownership there? Is, is, you know, for, is there a sense of, you know, you know, equal value or otherwise, you know, apart from the hierarchy, um, or she, he or she is just this versus someone else. So even these words are, um, are things that we take care of. So when we're talking about the human side, uh, as well as direct tools like this to understand, you know, what is your purpose and so forth, even the language that we use is something that we take care of. Uh, I'm, I'm going to skip this, so apologies, because uh, uh, the last thing is about um, letting go. Uh, and I talked earlier about pushing out. It's not, it's not really pushing out, um, because it's pushing out for good. I think another part of the team, in the whole life cycle of team, is how do we, how do we make it so that people leave in a really, really good way, but also that they don't, they don't wreck the team? So it's like pre-planning for, for that and payback. Uh, so offboarding, growth, network, cycle of life. Uh, just two more slides. Uh, and what's the on? Where's the click? Is the clicker down there? Uh, so the questions in my head, uh, and, I, and I did this with the last couple of. of uh, I think I left a few. I've left quite a few jobs, uh, but from from my own choice. <laughs> and the offboarding experience was never there. It was either very very hard. Actually, leaving Microsoft was pretty easy. It was three clicks on the, in the HR tool, and then. All my permissions were revoked. <laughs> but um, but uh, is, there an, is there an offboarding experience? Um, is, it, is it easy? Is it easy to get the last paycheck? But also, is that, is that reference there? And the offboarding is so also like, yeah, ha have I got all the knowledge? Have I, you know, the handover stuff and made sure that all the information, documentation is there? Um, and then, and the, there's two things. I'm, 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 uh, it's, it's, of course, your network, which is this here as well. You've, you've grown a little bit of your network. Uh, but the payback one is there because you never know it, later on then you know, there's going to be something which is positive there. Uh, McCoskey, Dan McCoskey is not here today, like here. He's asleep because he came in this morning about 8 a.m. and then he gave his talk earlier. Um, Dan used to work for me at Microsoft 15 years ago. Um, and I think that was a good parting because 15 years later, he asked me to work for him. And not only that, I said yes. So I think that in terms of payback, you never know. I'm old enough, as I said, with the gray hair, to have gone through the cycle a little bit, not only with teams, but with me. Um, and with that, I'll, I'll stop. Uh, if you want, you'll have the PDF. But these are the things that we talked about. We talked about, uh, oh, yes, this is where I say I did lie at the start. I do respect all the things about high performance teams. I do respect that. I do read the books. I do respect all of those things about team, team management and concepts like that. We did try to be a little bit more designerly, and those designerly things are all the things that we talked about today. We talked about things like screening in and diversity, the stars, but not the stars like the rock stars, the expectations, purpose. We have a couple of tools for that. Um, capability, the skills assessment, we, we, we didn't really do, but we, we talked through it and, and about these things here. So that's it. We have time. That's it. Four minutes. So I, because I promised that I would kick you out early, you managed to stay awake. Thank you very much. I'm going to finish it there. If you have any questions, let's take them outside. That's it for today. Thank you very much.